Let's take the area bounded by this line 2x plus 3y equals 6, the x-axis and the y-axis, and rotate it 360 degrees around the x-axis, sweeping out a three-dimensional figure, and find the volume of that figure. So when I do that, when I take this area in here and I rotate it around 360 degrees, what am I going to get? Well, I'm going to get a cone that looks like this. So how do I find the volume of that cone? Well, I'm going to do the same thing that I did when I just went about finding area. First, I'm going to draw in my little test rectangle. So I go over here to any value of x on the x-axis. I go up to the curve. That's the point x, y. And I draw in my little test rectangle that looks like that. Now that test rectangle, as I rotate this area around, that test rectangle goes around and sweeps out a little disk. So let's draw that in. So that little disk is going to look like this. Okay, let's see if I can color this in a little bit, maybe make this a little bit easier to see. It kind of looks like that. Right, you get the idea. Okay, let's take a look at the disk over here. I'll just draw it a little bit bigger. Okay, so there's my little disk, and that disk has a radius of y, and it has a thickness of dx. Well, I should be able to find the volume of that disk pretty easily. Isn't the volume of that disk, little element of volume, going to be the area of this face right here times the thickness? Well, the area of that face is going to be pi times the radius squared, or pi y squared, and then the thickness is dx. So it looks like I'm all set for my volume. Let's take it up over here, and I'm going to say the actual volume v is going to be the integral from 0 to 3 of pi times y squared times dx. And so what I mean is I'm going to take all these little disks like that, which I have written right here this way, and I'm going to start over here at x equals 0, and I'm going to add them all together up to x equals 3, and then I'm going to let the number of those little disks go to infinity, so I end up with one of the, those expressions that looks like the definition of the definite integral, and so in fact I get the definite integral like that. The rest is just algebra. So this is going to be, let's see, I'll take that pi outside, Integral from 0 to 3 of y squared. Well, y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2. If I solve this equation for y, that's what I get right there. So let's square that. When I square this expression, I'm going to get 4 ninths x squared. And then I multiply those together, I get 4 thirds x, and I double that. So that's 8 thirds x plus, I square the last term and get 4 dx. Okay, so that's y squared, where y is equal to this right here. So you might want to do that algebra yourself. End up with 4 ninths x squared minus 8 thirds x plus 4 dx. Now I'll integrate. So I end up with pi times um, 4 ninths, the integral of x squared, x cubed over 3, that's right, minus 8 thirds times the integral of x, which is x squared over 2, plus the integral of 4, which is 4x, and that I want to integrate from 0 to 3, or evaluate at 3, and then subtract from that what I get when I evaluate it at 0. Okay, so let's do that. Pi times, okay, when I put in 3 for x, 3 cubed is going to be 27, so I'll have 4 ninths times 27 thirds, minus, here I have 8 thirds, times, okay, when I put in 3 for x, x squared is 9, so I have 9 halves, plus when I put in 3 right here, 4 times 3 is 12, minus what I get when I put in 0, but since there's a factor of x in each term, when x is equal to 0, all those terms are 0, so they all add up to 0, so I'll just say pi times 0 for the last thing, that won't add anything to this at all, so let's see. 9 times 3 is 27, 2 divides into 8 4 times, 3 divides into 9 3 times, 4 times 3 is 12, so that term is 12, minus 12 plus 12, that's 0, that term's 4, all I have left is 4 times pi for that volume. So what do you think, is 4 pi correct for that? Well, let's see, let's go back over here, 
and just use our little formula from um, algebra, the volume of a, um, what do you call it, a cone is going to be one-third pi times the radius squared, so in this case the radius is 2, times the height, which is going to be 3. So did that work out right? Looks like it did. 1 third and 3 divide out, 2 squared is 4. I end up with 4 pi for that volume. So we already knew how to do this problem. It was no big deal. I could just use it, use, do it do, using a formula from, the al from algebra. But I want to set it up with an integral and just see that my results when I do integration match the results that I get when I just use algebra like this. And sure enough, they do. So the key to this, again, a little test rectangle to begin with so you can label everything correctly, dx and y. Then you rotate that little test rectangle all the way around, and that sweeps out a little disk. Find the volume of that disk, and you're all set. The rest is just a little bit of algebra. Substitute in for y right here, square it, you get this. All the integrals are very easy. The evaluations are easy, and we end up with 4 pi for that volume. So a uh, quick look at some volumes of solids of rotation like that, where we rotate an area around one of the axes.